So I'm going to build and install these epoxy shower walls. I've never done this before, but there's a lot of videos on YouTube about it. I was originally going to do tile, but I was having problems with these tiles chipping. So in one of the previous videos where I did the waterproofing here, I explained that there's a lot of different surfaces, a lot of different planes changing, and there's just a lot of cuts for the tiles. And to make it look good, you'd want to use some sort of edging like the Schluter edging, and it just takes a lot of work to make this right with tiles, which I'm not against, but I figured this epoxy shower is something that I wanted to give a try. So I've already waterproofed everything here with Semco Works. It's a waterproofing membrane, and you can actually lay the tile right on it. It kind of takes the place of Guard, but it's a little bit cheaper, it goes on easier, and it dries instantly. So the first thing I need to do is get all my pieces cut, and fit how I like and then we're gonna go ahead and apply some epoxy to it. So this is some of the stuff I'm gonna be using here and I made an 8x8 eight eight table. I took two pieces of half inch OSB and stacked them side by side so we got a nice big platform. This is gonna be the foam that we're using. This is half inch XPS and there's a lot of speculation saying that you should use the pink board. I don't think it makes any difference as long as it's polystyrene, I think it's either way it's the same. This stuff does come with this plastic layer that we're going to end up taking off. Because obviously you don't want to apply epoxy to something like that that can peel off. So that's on both sides, we'll peel that off. Most of the showers I've seen done were done with one inch foam. But I just don't want it sticking out from the wall that much, so I'm going to use half inch. I don't suppose it makes any difference with the strength of the wall because one inch of foam is not going to have any more strength than half inch. It's in the epoxy that gives it the strength and the mesh that you put down on it. So I'll get into all those details in a minute. In the meantime, let's get all these fit the way I want and then we'll bring them back down here and we can apply the epoxy.
So I held this one back just about three quarters of an inch from the edge of the tub. It makes a nice clean install. That's how you'd normally want to do it with the tiles. You would never want to bring it out because then that radius right there gets all messed up looking. And it'd be, and some people like to bring the tile right out to the edge and then cut out here, but I think that just looks silly. I think this is the way to go. Just stop where it stops being flat. This one at the top here, we had to put a joint in because it's more than four feet. So either way you go here, it's more than four feet. So I chose to make the joint up there. But we're gonna put a fiberglass mesh that kind of combines the two. And the epoxy kind of keeps it together. Alright, so the next step in this process is going to be putting a base coat on all of these pieces of foam. That's basically to give it most of its strength. And I'm going to also bond these pieces together. So a lot of you guys have probably seen the videos from this company here making this product. They make some good videos and some good products. I've used them before. Not on a shower though, but... So, this is the quick coat stuff. It dries really fast and we're gonna mix it with the thickener, the epoxy thickener. And so you do a one-to-one -one ratio, and then once that's mixed, you do a one-to-one -one ratio between that and this. And the reason you want a thickener is so it doesn't run off the sides everywhere. Because on this coat, you just want to give it strength. You don't really want anything running down the sides. You want it to be pretty thick to build up. And also, what I'm gonna do for this seam, I tape the bottom of it, but I'm just gonna lift it up like this, let a bunch of the stuff go into that crack, and then I'll let it down and it'll kind of squeeze everything into there and make it really solid. And once we got a coat on everything, we're gonna put this fiberglass mesh on here. We'll put that on there and then squeegee that out, and then we'll let that dry, and it'll be real rough looking, but that's okay. So this stuff dries so fast that I'm probably gonna end up doing one panel at a time because I don't know if I can work fast enough for it not to dry. Because I think it starts drying in like 10 minutes. So I guess I'll start out with the easy one here.
So I put a piece of 3 8 PVC board in here. And the reason is because I'm going to have a glass shower door. And I measured it up. And this is going to be the spot where I need to attach to the wall. So I don't want to be attaching through the foam, even though there's a solid two by six behind everything, behind the hardy backer and everything. I, I put solid blocking behind there, but I don't want to have to go through the foam to get there because then when I tighten it up, it's going to compress the foam. So I put this here, even though it's only three eighths and this is half inch, I'm going to fill that in so that it's solid epoxy. And that will give me a solid spot that won't compress when I attach that piece for the shower door, which on this, there's only one at the top. And it's a frameless door, so nothing else along here gets attached except for the bottom where it hits the tub gets attached with silicone. So we just need one attachment point here, one over there when we get to that, but we're gonna do this one first.
these panels I just did but this panel I did earlier today and that's good to go so that's just a black base coat because the main color for all these panels is going to be a darkish blackish color so rather than do like a white or a clear it's better to get it close to what the color is that you want to eventually have on there but this is basically the reinforcement layer almost like a fiberglass layer on a boat or something and then all those imperfections don't matter at all because we're going to lay a really thick coat on top of this with all the colors in it so tomorrow we'll be all ready for that with all these that's the nice thing about this quick coat it's fully set up in four hours so if you started in the morning you could actually recoat it later in the day you can see i used all the excess stuff to fill in this little eighth inch difference between the PVC trim piece and the other rest of the panel. That way that'll be nice and strong. I'll cut out these holes afterwards. This I just poured like an hour ago and it's almost set up. So at this point what I'm doing is sanding everything down. This edge right here is going to be exposed all the way from top to bottom. So I want to make sure that this is nice and straight. And I also want to make sure that it's rounded and that it's rounded consistently. So I just have a regular cordless drill with a sanding disc attachment and I'm using, I think it's 40 grit right now or maybe 60 grit. And I'm just going along and getting all the excess mesh as well as shaping everything up. So on all these other edges, I just need to make them flat. But on this edge, I need to profile that to make it a rounded shape like a bullnose. So the only two places that I need to do that is on this edge, on this side, and then on the mirrored side, on the other side, there's just one side like that too. Everything else is gonna be covered up by another joint or it's gonna meet up with the ceiling, so I don't need to round it. What are you guys catching there? Fish. Fish? What do you got? Minnows? And I got this. What do you got? Oh, you got a net? We got baby sunnies. Baby sunnies? And my, my, my dog went away. Oh, yeah. You want to hear a funny story? I caught one of these. I locked onto one of them. And I got two of them. Yeah. Let me see. You sure they don't have a stripe? You sure they're not a bass? Me? No, they have spice on the top. Okay. And my frog went away. Your Look. frog went away? Yeah. Look. Oh, yeah, that's sunny. You got all well, There's sunny. a lot of bass minnows in there. What? There's a lot of bass minnows in there. I'm surprised you didn't get one of those.
So the edges are all sealed off with masking tape. And I put some gray stuff foam in here. So we're ready to start mixing and pouring. I got three different types of color. I got silver, pewter, and blue pearl. I like the blue pearl. I also got black dye and white dye. So I'll show you what I'm gonna do. We're gonna mix a big thing of clear epoxy and then we're gonna mix it with some colors and then separate them. And then we're gonna put them all back into a container and we're gonna do an exotic pour. It's okay, this is all we have. No, 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 don't touch them. So I guess you're gonna make me wear clothes. No, I said no. I didn't realize something. I stuck my thumb in the pinky hole, in my pinky, in the thumb hole. Just leave it there. Okay. I'll just I'll just go right to it. No, this side. Oh. 
Okay. If somebody doesn't lean against the table, it's not balanced very well. Yeah, I just noticed that when you uh, leaned on the table. Yeah. in different spots in there too. You're not dumping them all in the same spot. But just do white. Do one of the whites. This. This. And then that one.
that's a blue pill. So one thing I've been learning as I'm going along here, this tape on the side didn't really hold up that well. So I had to put all this stuff to prop up where it was like falling down and flopping over. So I'm not sure exactly how to fix that other than what I'm doing, especially after the fact, after I already poured. But I think I got all the spots held up now. What happens is it knocks it down and then all the stuff starts pouring into there and then it goes down even further and it's like a snowball effect. But it's definitely looking pretty good. I love that bluish in there, even though that would not be really natural on a natural stone. That's okay. I like it. And as long as everybody else likes it, I like it. I'm not, I don't really care too much about it. It's waterproof and it works, so that's all I care, but it's kind of neat too. So now we wait like three hours and then I'll peel away the edges. And at that time it's more gelled up and it won't run over the sides, but it will kind of run over the sides. Because this edge needs to be nice looking and this edge needs to be nice looking. So we'll let that flow over and it'll be nice and thick there. And then once it's dry, I'll sand it down and profile it. But I took the map gas and I got all the bubbles out. It doesn't really take that long to do that. All right, so it's been about four hours. I'm about to make a huge mess. I need to release all these pieces of tape and then all of the stuff will ooze over the side and there's a lot of excess epoxy on here so it's going to be a big mess.
So you can see it's still oozing enough that it's still self-leveling and it kind of drips itself until it's empty and then the drips remain on the bottom and then you sand them off. So right now I still have the ability to touch up these edges. Like if there's a bare spot, you just kind of rub it with some epoxy and then it self levels and oozes out again and then it's fine. So this edge is looking good. That edge is looking good. That's all that matters. Everything else is gonna be covered up by something else. So I sanded down all these panels with 220 grit. This is all the residue from it. So I'm cleaning them off with acetone. That's what it looks like after being sanded and then cleaned off. That's ready for its top coat. I got these other panels here. They're ready to be cleaned and top coat. What I'm using for the top coat is the ultimate top coat. And I got a natural finish, which is a like a matte finish, so it's not glossy. So that's the look that I'm looking for. I'm not looking for a glossy look. Basically, this stuff gives it that matte finish, but also makes it extremely durable, like scratch resistant, which is not super important in the shower, but for like countertops, it's really important. So they say to use a quarter inch nap microfiber roller, but I can only find three eighths. I'm sure that'll be fine. So I got two rollers. One you want a wet roll and one you want a dry roll. I need to de-shed these. So using some masking tape, I'll run it along the sticky side and get all the little um, pieces of like lint and stuff off of it. This stuff says that it covers 50 square feet for this amount right here, but I have over half of it left still, and this is 70 square feet. 
So I should have mixed up a lot less than this because now I'm going to waste this whole thing. This is like 60% of what I just mixed up. So I only used 40%. Because this is 70 square feet, I actually got two kits. So here's a whole other one that I didn't open yet. Glad I didn't. I may do countertops down here with epoxy. I don't know, we'll see how these look in the morning. If they look how I think they're gonna look, I may actually do that instead of granite or marble for my countertops over here. So I may end up needing this kit after all, but it would have been nice to have half of this left too. So I'm all ready to set these panels. They've had time to dry. They're not sticky anymore. So Stone Coat Countertops recommends putting 100% silicone on the wall to adhere these. I'm not sure why they don't use construction adhesive. It's actually even a little cheaper, but I'm just gonna go with what they say. And we'll just use the 100% silicone. I got the advanced stuff that's got better adhesion. So we'll use that. We'll put the back panel on first, and then we'll put that panel on, and then we'll put the side panels on. So then all that's left is that sill right there, which I'm gonna address in a little while. So I'm very happy with this. This came out really nice. Not only did the colors and the shine come out nice, but all the reveals around all the joints are good. There's no major gaps anywhere. Everything has like a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch of space. I really love the way that blue comes out. I know it's not natural, like you would never find that on a natural stone, but it still looks really nice. So at this point, this shower is almost ready to use, but I still need to do something for a sill here, and then I need to do something for a jam and trim and sill around this window. So I've been going back and forth about what I wanted to do. I could have made more of these panels to go around for the jam, and then I was thinking maybe on the bottom 
on these two sills here maybe I could do like a PVC trim and then do the epoxy on it but I don't know if I want to get involved in all that it's just a whole bunch of time that I don't think is necessary to be spent right now I think what I'm gonna do instead is just get PVC trim and just do everything in PVC trim and that right there I'm probably just gonna do PVC trim and then just leave it alone I don't even think I'm gonna paint it I was thinking maybe I could paint it black but you know I just don't think it's even necessary I think white there and white all the way around and white sill I think it would look fine and then there would be white trim around it too the thing about that is PVC trim is paintable so if it really bothers me that much in the future I can always tape everything off mask everything off and just paint it I can paint everything the sill the jam that sill everything can be painted I could even epoxy if I really want to in the future but for right now I just don't feel like spending like an entire day on doing that I'm just gonna leave it white for now and then I can put my fixtures in I'm gonna put the knobs on and this shower is almost ready to use I'm gonna put a shower door on here too so I guess I'll get that going I'm gonna use black silicone to put in all these joints So that'll hide the silicone so you won't even know that it's there.
pretty happy with the way that looks. I use a 1x3 which is two and a half inches wide and three quarters of an inch thick. Everything is PVC trim so nothing can rot, nothing can expand, warp, swell. I know it probably looked pretty easy for me to put this in but this sill I put a half inch per foot slope on it going down this way. So now my jam pieces on the side had to be cut at that angle too. Which you can see they're pretty tight. And then of course these pieces had to be cut on that angle too. Which is not like really hard to do but it's not as easy as it looks. So PVC can be painted but for right now I'm going to leave it the way it is because the window's white, the tub's white, the toilet's white, the top of the vanity's kind of white, the trim around those lights is white, that's white. So in the bathroom I think white is fine for anything that's like a trim material. So I'll probably do a baseboard that's white too. Just in the bathroom. Everything else in this house is going to have a wood trim like that. So I figured I should do all that before I put on the glass doors. So now I got the glass doors, so let's put those on. Also, in case you're wondering where the soap is going to go, that's where the soap is going to go. And on that ledge there, since that's a foot thick, I figured that's a place where we can put like plants. And then if we run out of room for soap on that shelf, I can always make some triangular shelves to go in there. Maybe not on that side, but definitely on this side we can make a few of them going up there. And I can make those out of foam and epoxy it with the same colors because I still have some of these colors left. So if I deem it necessary to have more space for soap, I can easily put those in and I would just use construction adhesive because a lot of times you put them in, even if they're ceramic on tiles, you still put them in with construction adhesive so it'll definitely hold the foam. And I'll probably use inch or maybe even inch and a half foam just because in that small little piece that thickness of the foam will matter. So we can make a nice shelf epoxied all in with the same colors. I can always do that in the future. For right now, you guys know I'm just trying to keep it moving. I'm trying to get things done. So we'll deal with this for now. I'll just caulk all that in. But like I said, in the meantime, we'll put this shower door in. And yes, I was actually trying to catch a turtle. And I caught this thing. No, I didn't want to do it. Oh, we're going to over here. I caught it over there. You caught that with that net? Yeah. I caught it with the net. Uh, no. Is it safe to touch? Hey. Can I pick it up? Yeah, it's going to bite you. Oh, it's going to It's you gotta hold it by its mouth. Yeah, hold it by its mouth. What the? That would be weird. Boom back! Boom back! Do you wanna hold it? Yeah, no, okay. you know what that is? That's a bullhead. Yeah, I know. I it you know that? I know that. Oh, okay. Do you wanna hold it? Yeah. You do? You gotta hold it by its mouth. What was that, by the way? Oh. It doesn't Look, even have shredded over. teeth. Don't have any. Oh, yeah. Did I tell you they tried to eat a turtle yesterday? No. Yeah, the turtle's right here. Aw, oh, it peed on me. Let it go? You have to gently put it in the water. Yeah, but I'm the one who caught it. Do I get to let it go? Catch a bunch of my sunnies. Hey, here's this turtle. <laughs> Thank you.
I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. What do you guys think? Everything about this tub and shower. I like the glass door. I like the tub itself with the curve on it. I like the ledge, the deep window sill. I like the trim and especially the epoxy walls. I think that that's probably the worst panel. It's just a little too busy for me. But I really like these other panels. Especially that one. That one's the favorite. Everybody likes that panel. That one is probably the second best one. So I have absolutely no regrets doing this. I really like this a lot. I prefer this over a tile shower any day. And this glass door is pretty nice too. It's not the most expensive thing to do either. This glass door was $500. The tub was like $300. So that's really not a whole lot to spend. I think I have less than $1,000 into everything there. Got the rain head up there. The regular shower head over there. I gotta adjust those knobs a little bit still. They're not in the right place right now, but other than that, this is ready to take a shower. The silicone is all set up, it's ready to go. I also put this vanity in here in this toilet. I was gonna make a vanity, but I just don't have time right now, so I just got this one. I will make one in the future though. I wanna make it out of spalted maple, all the rails and styles. But for the time being, that's way better than white, so I don't mind having that. The tiles, I love those. So I think that's it for this video, guys. I think the next video in this house is going to be for the kitchen. I'm gonna be building and installing all my kitchen cabinets, and then, and then I'm probably gonna do an epoxy countertop too. I'm pretty sure, I'm like 80% sure. I'm going back and forth about granite or marble versus the epoxy, but this ultimate top coat that I put on here that gave it a matte finish, it's much more dull than the original finish that the epoxy had, that is super durable. I've been trying to scratch it with all different kinds of tools that are metal and nothing can scratch it. I think the only thing you could do to scratch it was maybe sandpaper or diamond, something like diamond bit or something, diamond pieces. But regular steel or aluminum doesn't scratch that. So with that in mind, and it's super heat resistant too, with that in mind, I think I may actually do my countertops with that too. I may even use the same colors. Maybe not so much going on, but I like those colors. So I'm gonna get going on those kitchen cabinets actually today, and I'll see you guys on that video.